Pat Bev Pod with Roan. Roan. Another ski. another edition. We're with Roan Ski, but I'm never over my skis. Ah, okay. Flo is elite. Okay. You know he's a beast. Uh-huh. And the boys at Tel Aviv. What's up, Pat Bev? <laughs> hey, you got on that camo today. You on some shit today, Patch. Exactly, You on some bro. shit today, Patch. I'm crawling through the mud. No, you your know, zipper fine. You ain't got to crawl. You ain't got to cover it up. Yeah, your I was zipper, about to say, I, I, I didn't know. Zip, zipper was zipper was uh, exposed, but uh, no, Pat I Bev, got it. I would have told you. Back in Israel, reporting poolside, cool vibes. Got the got the wine going down. Uh, everything looks fantastic over there. Roses really smell like doo doo doo, and that's uh, shout out to all my outcasts out there. What's going on, bro? How are you, brother? I had a little off day today. We're getting ready for our first little Euro Cup game. Uh, the, other than that, fucking catching the vibe. The season begins uh, for you. It's right around the corner, and uh -huh. I'm, I'm sure you couldn't be more excited for the Euro Cup. And basically, I think, I don't know if people know exactly how the Euro Cup works. If you guys, it's it's almost like British soccer, right? Like, if you guys get to the top of the Euro Cup, then you get elevated into Euro League. Yes. Yep. Next season. Yep. So it's like uh, elevation relegation type of thing, where it's like yeah. your bottom of the league, you get bumped down. Top of the league, you get bumped up. And from yeah. all uh, reports, it seems like the team in Hopel Tel Aviv is expected to do big things this year. Yeah, we, that's the goal, right? We want to be in in contention with every championship and uh, and take control of it when we get there. You know. A hundred percent. Um and you're but, you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work with that shit. You know, you gotta get lineups and you gotta each game is different. You got a ton of guys that can hoop. Four or five NBA guys. You got a young Israeli guard known who should be entering draft this year. He had crazy scholarships. Kansas, Kansas, where else he said? He said uh Villanova. So he a young talent, he gonna be good. So we gotta if we like eleven, we got a Bruno, he just got here. He played in the league for a little bit. We got Jonathan Motley. He played in the league for a little bit. Played with me with the Clippers. We got Ish Wayne Wright. He played with Phoenix Suns. Uh, so yeah, we got a, we got a, we got we got some NBA talent. We got some, you know, Joe Ragland. He's a big talent over here in Europe for some years. Marcus Foster, who's a bucket. Uh, big Bentlow. He spent some time in Boston. So we we got a we got a nice little team. We got to put it all together now. Yeah, it's time to put it all together, and uh, it's time to lock in. We got in. some our Israelis are pretty good too. We got Irish Bar and Tamor, and like I said, the young oh, Fresh Talk. Uh, yeah, yeah, Fresh. Oh, oh, Fresh Talk. Shout pod. out Fresh Talk. Subscribe. Shout out Fresh Talk Pod. Subscribe to the pod, my homie Bar. He's a uh, intelligent man. So uh, yeah, we got a nice little piece, and we got and we got coaching. So and we got an owner who got money, got a lot of motherfucking money too. So yeah, those are all good things. What are the dates that you have circled on your calendar, on your schedule this year, as far as teams that are going to be tough? And what are the dates that you have circled on your calendar as far as places that you are excited to travel to in Europe? Because I know that that was an appealing part of this offer. Um, so we go to Barcelona, right? This uh, on the 23rd, we're in Barcelona for about three nights. Um, that's going to be fun. I'm trying to find a way if I can... <laughs> I don't tell anybody if I can get out to uh, Fashion Week in Milan some oh. way, somehow. That's oh. going on currently. Oh. Um, <clears throat> it kind of ends in Paris, so I'll probably touch it up a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, uh, we got the Canary Islands coming up. That's later on. We got Lithuania the week after. I'm, you know me, I'm excited just to who, period. You know, whatever league. I know, you know, it's a lot of tension with our team. And with attention comes, you know. Expectations. Expectations and crowd and. You know, you move around and, you know, we're the show and people want to see us and, you know, it's going to be fun this year. I can't wait. Be can't fun, wait. Uh, it's been interesting seeing the vlogs. What was the takeaway from your trip to Greece? Thessaloniki. Oh, the, the, Thessaloniki. Shout out to Greek. Shout out to Greek. Yeah, he heard what you said wrong. He said he agreed with me 1,000%. Of course, an NBA player is going to call himself no, positionless. No, but that's the truth. He is, though. I mean, I can't wait to see our list of positionless players. By your metrics, it's going to be 25 players long. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, we should just... Uh, Jump right to it? 
Yeah, let's get right to it. New Amsterdam starting five. That's the one. Positionless. New- oh, we're doing positionless this play. week? This week. Let's do it right now. Okay, the, the top five positionless players in the NBA. Because I think this time, we what we've been doing is we've been going through. We did our list of top five centers. We did our list of top five power forwards. This week traditionally would be small forwards. But at the no. same time, we're not going to do small forwards. We'll jump to small forwards next week. So uh, w- I want to go through the top five most positionless, best positionless players in the league right now because... This has been a lot of fanfare from your perspective. Who's positionless? Yeah. Who's not positionless? Is it just guys who would traditionally fall into the four or five category or three, four category? Can it be across the board? Give me your top five positionless players. All right. I'm going top five positionless players and I'm ranking them. You're ranking? Yeah, I'm ranking them. Holy I'm going. Shit. Yeah, I'm going LeBron at one, KD spot two, Greek spot three, Wimby spot four. Now, this last one, I've been thinking a lot about it. Okay, I love that. I'm going Luka five. Wow, Luca positionless. Because a lot of people could say he's a one, brings the ball up, initiates the offense. People could say he's a two because he has that shooting touch. He could finish. People might say he's a three because of his uh, traditional size profile. And people might say he's a four because he has a, a, a bad body. But I think that there's a lot of different things that uh, play into a positionless player. But why those guys and why not like what is Jason Tatum positionless? Um I think he has a chance to be. When you say chance to be, that makes it seem like positionless is almost the final frontier of basketball players. Like you strive to be positionless because it means that you have the ultimate blend of versatility, switchability, um, the threats you can have on offense, the way you can initiate on offense. So how would you define positionless? And is it the final frontier for a player? For So first off, positionless has to deal with height. That's first off. Like you can't be a positionless basketball player and you, you know, six So Russ one, can't be two. positionless. You can't. And not not in my book. Not you know. I don't you know. I don't think Russ is positionless. I think he's a, a guard. You know, like I don't put him one guard. I don't put him two guard. He's just a guard who fucking know how to hoop. You know, like I don't put James Harden. You know, even though he's one of the best players to play the pick and roll ever. You know, like top three like best players to play the pick and roll ever. I don't put him as strictly as point guard. You know, so positionless comes with height. Obviously, you say LeBron James because before LeBron James, you haven't seen anything like LeBron James besides, you know, the Magic Johnson. But we said who's currently in the NBA. And then when you think of LeBron, you instantly think of KD. And I mean KD of like pushing the ball up the court, like crazy handle to be to be that size, crazy handle to get past defender, crazy handle to create your own offense and the ability to post up and the ability to shot block and rebound. At that at at that seven footer size, you know, and then you look at a guy like Greek, you know, like Greek. You feel me? He's great with the ball. A lot of Euro steps downhill. Obviously, he's still putting together the 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 the, the, the shot right now, but it's all coming between a tween tween has he pull type vibe. He can play the post. He can dime the shit out that motherfucker. And then you see Wimby, who's like a who has a little bit of all of them in them, you know, and just taller. You know, you see a little flashes of LeBron when it comes to uh, playmaking and you see a little bit of, you know, he's in his own lane defensively though, but you see a little KD, you see a little, you know, a little Greek in it. And then finally, when you go Luca, which makes him a hard, a hard cover is because of his size. You too small. He go take you to the post. Cause he is six, seven, six, eight. Like he ain't no six, five, six, six. He's six, seven, six, eight with, with that. That ain't even muscle he got. He got that motherfucker. He lean that shit up on you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he's 6'7", 6'8". You can't put a classic point guard on him because he's going to post it. 
You can't put a classic two guard on him because he's still small. You can't put a three on him because if you put a three on him, you got to switch three, five, pick and roll, and now you got your five man guarding him. So just guys that can affect the game without being in any type of position. It's positionless basketball to me. So Luca, he's a legit six eight. Yeah, six seven, six eight. He's uh, you know, you put can't put the classic point guard on him because he's too small. Can't put the classic two guard on him because he's too small. Can't put three on him because if you do, you have to switch three five pick and roll, and now he's just attacking your five all day. So those are my top five. New Amsterdam, <sighs> refreshing starting five positionless basketball players in order. So everybody can't cover Luca. No, no. It seems like with I, this with this he's list, he's gonna break a lot of records. He's gonna be the one to break a lot of records. I've obviously given health, given longevity of career. If he at the pace he's going, he's gonna break a lot of records. Ronski, Ronski, he gonna break a lot of them. What would be the ideal player that you would pair him with? What type of player? Because I think when we got to the finals, we saw that his supporting cast was not enough to win him a championship. So as nice as breaking records would be for him, it'd probably be way better if he was winning championships from his perspective. So what kind of player complements him the best uh, as far as uh, a guy that can get the most out of Luka and that can get the Dallas Mavericks to win in championships? I think with any championship team, you always need another ball handler slash creator slash score with size. With size. I, yeah, I don't like I think the success with Dallas had previously when they did have success with was when Spencer Dinwiddie was there with Jalen Brunson, Luka Doncic, and Spencer Dinwiddie. The more guards you have that can break down the defense and you don't have to rely on one guy. And if you rely on one guy, then you have to you can scout for one guy. But if you got to scout three, four guys that can put the ball on the floor, you know, it's 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 tough then. You know what I'm saying? So um, let me see. A guy like uh, Shit Brunson compliments him. Um, Nam Hart from Indiana compliments him. Um, you know, you need a guy that can, you feel me, spot up and shoot the three with him too because he's going to have a ball in his hand a lot. Um, who out there can fucking just burn it? Um... Seth Curry, Seth Curry played with him, has success, you know, like, uh, you know, just guys that can that can put the ball on the floor that can that can burn it with Luca, you know, so. Um, it also seems look, like their their roster composition this last year, the guys that are starting in the finals, Hardaway, Derek Jones, it seemed like they want guys who also can uh, defend multiple positions because they don't want Luca to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting on defense. See, like he's a better defender than people give him credit for, but I think yeah. that they want someone that can really expend a lot of energy on the defensive side where yeah, Seth Curry that, might not be the answer for that kind of thing. Yeah. But that only, as you see, and you know, when you get down to that final team, that, that only goes so far. You got to have people that can create also like the game is changing slowly. It used to be back in the day, defense winning championships, right? And I wouldn't say that's the case now. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's the case now. I think teams are so talented offensively, these, especially these superstars. Like, you know, you got uh, 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 you play a team like like Dallas who can break you down off the dribble, and you know, you got the defensive player of the year who you know who can't guard all those positions. So defense takes you so far. Uh, the more playmaking you have, the more offensive uh, ability you have, the more size you have, the ability to shoot the three now. What Boston do? They just shot more threes than everybody else, right? They they shot threes. They missed threes. They kicked them out and shot more threes. You know, obviously you have to give their defense a lot of credit because, you know, they can switch. They can switch the size. They got Derek White. They got Drew. They got Jason Tatum. You know, you can switch one through four with Brazilians. You can switch five. With Al Horford, you can switch five. So that leads to one-on-one. And which also leads to creativity. And if you can't, you know, if you don't have a lot of guys that can do it off the bounce, it's going to be tough for you to beat those teams that can guard and do it off the bounce and shoot three. So that's why I really got Boston. You feel me? I know it might be tough for them this year with everybody coming back, but with the same, you know, the same pedigree they have. I, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, they, it's early to tell if they win championship right now, but they definitely going to be there still. Well, I think that they're falling into both of the categories that you're saying because their two guard spots are guys in Derek White and Drew Holiday who can play lockdown defense, wow. but also who can create, who can initiate the offense, who can be uh, dynamic playmakers 
uh, both ways. And I mean, you saw that's why those guys were getting a lot of minutes on the Olympic team. Uh, keep on going through your list. It's interesting that you put them in this tier that you did, in the order that you did, because you're on record saying that you think Wemby's going to be the best player in the league this upcoming year. And so then it seems yeah. like you're giving LeBron, KD, even Greek the nod because of what they've done over the history of their career. Whereas if you're prognosticating forward, you think that Wemby's going to be the top dog in the league. Yeah, I think he's going to be the top dog just because he does it defensively also. He alters shots, he rebounds, he pushes it, right? A lot of people don't want to do this. And this is where, you know, you, you have a lot of takes of who's right, who's wrong. Longevity should count, right? You taking care of your body, playing a ton of years, that should, that should count regardless of where, where your team is placed, how y'all finish the season. Like longevity counts to be able to still do it at a certain age is even more incredible because we don't know the future for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I get that from the LeBrons, the Katie's um, longevity counts, you know, and obviously, you know, LeBron, he's been doing it. I, we, we literally has been doing it since the sophomore year in high school. <laughs> he's been playing the, 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 the same high level basketball since his sophomore year in high school. Like, you got to give that some credit. You got to give KD credit. You know, him him being seven foot, shooting hezzy pools is something you've never heard. Terry Keeley's come back and have better numbers at that size still. You know, like, so longevity counts. And you have to, you know, you have to put that in order too. What what kind of guys are right on the outside? Who would you put in your honorable mention category? Are there other positionless players that you think uh, are, are right there? Maybe a Paolo uh, is he positionless? Um, uh, Jalen Brown, maybe is he? Is he at a level of positionlessness? Who else is is you know right on the outside? I think my in? next person I'm going. I'm thinking my next. I think the next person I'm going with unconsciously, and it's the first name to jump out to me is Draymond Green. You put him at your power You're talking forward about list, to though. be able to guard fives. I, I know, but when you talk about people who own that, the, the cuffs of honorable mentions, like he's a positionless basketball player too. He's the point guard of the Golden State Warriors. People just figured that out maybe a year or two ago. No, he you know he brings up the ball. Like the offense is so much better when he brings up the ball that people don't even understand the numbers not, are are not even comparable when he brings up the ball versus any other guard on the team. When he brings up the ball, they score like one point well, points per possession. I think they score like one point two, almost one point three points per possession. That's like 120 points over a course of a game. If he was to only just bring up the ball. So, yeah, he's the real point guard. I mean, yeah, he. So I put him up there when it comes to positionless. He can guard fives. He can guard point guards. He can guard fours, twos, threes, you know, like. So that was the next person I was to think of if it was to be a, a extended list. Fair enough. I think that that's a, a strong list. And I mean, you're looking at some of the best players in the game on this list. Folks, let's take a second and talk about New Amsterdam Vodka. You know that this episode is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports. Whether you find your wins on the court or off, you're bringing the hype, and New Amsterdam is going to bring that crisp, smooth cocktail to you and your crew, and that's exactly what they've been looking for. You can have it with juice and a soda, with a Cosmo, a dirty martini. Nothing beats sipping a classic New Amsterdam vodka mule while watching your favorite players kill it on the court or on their baller podcast. Even this past weekend, they had little New Amsterdam mule. like they, It was the official drink at the nicest, like it was a, a wedding. Like it, Everybody was on top of the... New Amsterdam mules, but I mean, people were drinking it straight. People were drinking it in shots. It was going around like an absolute party. New Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports, the official vodka of the Pat Bev Pod. And folks, remember, find your wins today with New Amsterdam vodka. Oh, yeah. But it has me thinking about a new, a new segment that I want to do with you. And okay. uh, basically what I want to do with this segment is I want to talk about some specific players who are maybe unsung and their potential impact on this upcoming season. And we're going to call it the X factors. OK, Ooh, I so love this. I want to talk about four different X factors and I want to talk about the ways that they can change the season 
for their team. And I think that these are guys who aren't going to be all stars or maybe they maybe borderline for some of them, not going to be Olympians, but they are guys who are going to be the fulcrum around which winning or losing bends for their team. So the four guys I want to talk about are these four players. Contavious Caldwell Pope, Tyler Hero, Christian Braun, or and actually Rui Hachimura. So let's start with Contavious. None of these guys I'm picking. I'm not talking about picking. I want to talk about their impact. What do you mean pick? <laughs> uh, if there was four guys I was to pick, it wouldn't be those four guys. Well, that... I want to talk about these four guys. Okay, we could talk about your four. That's cool. I want to talk about these four guys. And then if you have four, we could talk about four different X factors. Okay, say but, less. So let's talk about these four guys and the impact that they could have or might have. So let's start with Contavious Caldwell Pope. Contavious Caldwell Pope. This guy is a career winner. This guy has made a ton of money throughout his career on different teams. He has won a championship with the Lakers. He's won a championship with the Denver Nuggets because what he offers is incredible defense. He's not a needy offensive player. You can put him in a corner. He's a guy who can burn it, and he's a guy who is always impacted winning for the teams that he's been on. This year, He's on the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic had a bunch of money in the offseason that they could have spent somewhere. They had a chance to maybe get one of these really high-profile guys, but wound up with Contavious Caldwell Pope. He is a ultimate uh, piece who's not going to be the star player on your team, but he's going to be a starter, and they're hoping he'll be a valuable one. What does Contavious Caldwell Pope potentially offer to the Orlando Magic? And what's the best case scenario for him this year? Obviously, his pedigree of winning, right? Winning a lot of games, winning championships. That's the first thing that jump off the page. Second thing that jump off the page for me is uh, toughness, right? Not when I and, and people have to get the two toughness because it's two different type of toughness. It's a mental toughness. Come on, guys! I'm gonna gather the troops, you know, or 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 uh, uh, physical toughness. No, I ain't gonna let nobody punk us. Right. I think he gives off a little bit of both of them, not leaning in, in, in either way, but he gives off a little both both of them. Like he's on a team. They're not, a you know, they're not a, a pussy team. None of the teams he's been on. Um, and he's able to, you know, he's able to galvanize the troops, if you might say. He's able to. OK, things ain't going well. Hey, man, look, this is he can give, give the young team a lot of insight. So those two jump right off the page. Basketball wise, he's a guy that can, you know score without needing a ton of dribbles right you can you can put him in that 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 um that left corner if the rim is facing me this way you can put him in the left corner and go dho he come off going to his right hand get you a bucket he plays off the catch wheel he shoots the three wheel you know he can give you from any night 15 to 20 points so with all that together i think that helps any team not only just orlando magic and it's no surprise why he's been so successful uh in the nba what does he offer to their young star players as far as an upside? Because that's a team that if you're looking how to for- manual, Ooh. just a how to manual, right? Just a how to manual, how to consistently get the best out of your game. He's seen LeBron do it. He's seen Jokic do it. You know how to bounce back after a loss, how to bounce back after a playoff loss, how to bounce back after a, a back to back where your body's not feeling well, how to bounce back from not shooting well that night, how to bounce back from a tough loss, how to bounce back from a, a big win. The how to manual I think he provides for for that young team. And do you think that he could take their offense from being a bottom third offense to maybe a middle of the pack offense? What can he offer to their offense? Shooting. They didn't shoot the ball at all well. Everyone in the league knew that. Uh, if they shot the ball a little bit better, they'd be one of the better teams in the NBA, you know, because uh, all their points in the paint. Now, he, he he gives them shooting, which is, you know, mixed with, the you know, Frank Wagner and Franz Wagner and Van Caro and Snugs, you know, mixed with those guys. Uh you know, he has a he has a, a chance to you know upgrade their uh, outside scoring, which think, which is which is needed. You think that the Magic can wind up being a top four seed in the East this year? Um, listen, I said they won't get in the playoffs. My tune has changed. Uh, top five, I give them. Right outside of the Bucks, Sixers, Knicks, and Celtics. Yeah, 
Interesting. So you see them being a, a notch better than this, the Cavs this year? Um, I think they're right there with the Cavs. I think with Kyle Will Pope, they played the Cavs again. You know, I, you know, Cavs defense, the Cavs were hurt and all that stuff. So health is, health is important. Hold on. Don't get mad at me, Ron. I'm shooting a pot. I'll call you right back. Bye-bye. So, um, you know, we don't know how, you know, health is always important for the Cleveland Cavaliers, so we don't know what that, but they're right there on that tier, them and Cleveland Cavaliers for sure. I'll say that. Okay, let's take it to our next player, who also is, whose team probably is also right in that tier, and let's talk about Tyler Hero. I think Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero has a ton of upside as a player. He's a guy who will get you 20 points a night. I think that people I don't think he's the X factor on that team though. Talk to me. Yeah, I don't think he's an X factor on that team. Well, let me let me put my let me give you my case for why he is an X factor on that team. Okay. My case for why he is an X factor on that team is because Jimmy Butler's health has not matched up to his pedigree over the last season. And I think that we saw Pat Riley even talking about this, saying that, hey, if Jimmy Butler wants this next massive contract, we need a guy who is going to be healthy and who we can rely on at all times. So for me, Tyler Hero becomes an X factor because he's looked to as that next player who will be able, who should be able to be healthy all the time, who can be your number one scoring option. And I think the question mark is, can he give you more outside of that? Can he be a consistent playmaking threat? Can he be a guy who gives you um, above replacement level defense? Can he be... Uh, a strong enough player to elevate the Miami Heat when Jimmy Butler's not there and to be a big enough compliment where he's a one and a one A when Jimmy Butler is there as far as wing scoring. Well, anytime Tyler Hero's healthy and he plays, he plays well. Anytime it's a big game, Tyler Hero plays well. Anytime it, they say Tyler Hero is going through a shoot slump, he comes out on TV and he plays well. Tyler Hero isn't the problem. The point guard play is the problem. The point guard play for the Miami Heat is the X factor, right? They had Cal Lowry. You're trying to get the the, the, the the correct guard that fits with Jimmy Butler because you know Jimmy Butler will have the ball all the time. So you're trying to get that. Terry Rozier, you know, he just got there last year. Obviously, anyone getting to the Miami Heat culture, is, it's, it's, a, it's an adjustment period, you know. So uh, uh, Max Schroes left. Um, Gabe Vincent left. These are all point guards, you know? So I look at the Miami Heat. I don't look at it as a Tyler Hero X factor. I look at it as a the point guard, the point guard play. You need a, another guard, ball handler, that can get you from anywhere to 10 to 9 to 14 points a game, you know? And, I, and, and, and out of that 14 has to come free throws and threes, you know? Uh, Tyler Hero's always played well. That's really literally why they paid him. He played well, hurt. He came back. Tried to play through injury, like Tyler Hero isn't that, you know, the issue. I think the point guard player is the X factor for me. Can Tyler Hero be an all star? Um, in the East. Borderline. Uh, if, yeah, borderline. If they come out hot, you know, he you know, he shoots it, you know, he always shoots it well, but he shoots it well when he gets into the three point contest. Yeah. Yeah, I think he can be an all star if done correctly. Yeah. And so the I mean the rest of their starting lineup, bam. Jaime Jaquez, it seems like these are those are four really strong guys. But yeah. where where does the it, and traditionally the Miami Heat have been able to find point guards in non traditional ways? Like they'll like yeah. the guys you mentioned are guys who kind of emerged. Do you think that there's yeah. anyone else in the pipeline, or do you think it's something that should be addressed by trade? I don't know. Like we don't know. You know, with the Heat, you never know. You never know a guy, and all of a sudden, you, a guy gets hot from the Heat, and next thing you know, he's the next Gabe Vincent. He's the next Max Struess. You know, so like. You never know. They got they got all their gems hidden up, you know. So, uh, but you know, at the same time, they always in you know, it's coaching also coaching. You know, they're always in the running of being competitive every year, regardless of who's hurt and who's playing. And that's a credit to obviously Riles and the the head coach, uh, uh, Coach Bo. So, uh, I don't think it's the X factor with for Tyler Hero. I think it's the point guard play is the X factor for uh, the Miami Heat. What could go wrong for the Heat this year to make it a worst case scenario? I don't think it even gets the worst case scenario as long as you have Coach Spo and Bam, right? I don't even think it gets the worst case scenario. I think Coach Spo is that talented that regardless of what's going on, his team going to be at, you know, I ain't saying knocking at the front door, but they going to be outside waiting for a motherfucker to slip up. 
for sure they're going to be waiting for a motherfucker to slip up so they can catch him. You know, and that's giving, that's, that, that's, you know, injury. Fully healthy, it's fucking 10 can win a championship every year. You know, that's just the pedigree of the Miami Heat. So you never know with that. Uh, I think the next one I want to go to is uh, kind of the counterpart to Contavious Caldwell Pope. We've uh, Christian Braun. Um, yeah. We've seen the Denver Nuggets be extremely successful and yeah. we've seen them win a championship. But with that comes a lot of mouths to feed, both as far as getting the ball, as far as usage, but also as far as getting paid. And when guys get paid, that means there's less money for other people. And yeah. so... Uh, two years ago when they won a championship, we saw them getting a lot of production from Contavious Caldwell Pope. We saw them getting production from Bruce Brown. These guys who are the glue players, who can play some defense, who can kind of slow you down a little bit. But now we're at a point where Jamal Murray's getting paid. Jokic is getting paid. Uh, we we know what Aaron Gordon is. We know what Michael Porter Jr. is. But do, who is their fifth starter? How much can he give you? And what are you looking for from that guy? Braun? Yeah. I think a little bit of everything, right? I think what made them really good when they had Bruce Brown was his ability to guard, his, to be, his ability to be creative off the bounce and get his shot, right? Um. I'm not saying that Bruce Brown is in there dropping dimes, but he puts so much pressure on the defense when he gets in the paint with a float or a quick decision that, you know, you have to respect him. So I think that Braun has to do some of that, that, that type. But I think Russ, Russ is a big factor in this too. You know, you, we haven't seen Russ play with a, a, a shooting five. You know, people don't understand, like, some of Russ's best, best years, he, you know, played with stretch fours and guys that can space the court and he can, you know, blow past a guy, get in the paint. He's actually playing with a, a stretch five who can respectfully burn it, you know. So, like, I like that also. But Braun has to, he has to be a little bit of Carl Will Pope. He has to be a little bit of a, 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 a Bruce Brown. Um, I actually wanted to see him take the leap this, this, this past year. Um, I wouldn't say he did not take the leap. I'd just say he stayed steady, but... I'm excited to see him like have the ball, uh, 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 hit some big threes, get a big stop, you know, because I like his swag. I like I like his toughness. So this is a big year for him. Like he, you know, their coach is great too. Jokic is great, but you know they do need that one 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 person off the bench that can take that team to the next level. And I think that uh, he has a chance to be that player. Yeah, that's I think why Contavious Caldwell Pope was so effective for them because he's kind of quiet in a loud lineup. Like yeah. he can kind of just be there and be sufficient with his style of play and affect the, the game on both ends. But at the oh. same time, like, but, uh, do they have enough? Because the championship window for some teams opens and it closes quickly. So do they have enough to, to get back to that point? And, you know, what, what shows you if they have enough? You got, you got Jokic on the team and you got uh, Jamal Murray on the team. You got enough, right? They might not be... The loudest team, but when, it, when the playoffs come, they have a system that they run that they run so well, and they know each other so well. You know, they're 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 a matchup problem from any for any team in the playoffs. Minnesota built their team just to beat the Denver Nuggets. They literally built the team just to beat Denver Nuggets. You know, so uh, I think Denver Denver's gonna be there. I think Denver, Denver's definitely gonna be there. I think if 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 this was if Denver was on the other side and didn't meet Minnesota until the championship, I think. Denver will be the champions right now. You know what I'm saying? It's just the the luck of the draw and who you play. But uh, you know, Minnesota did beat them. They had their number the year before also. So, but you know, I think that's really the only team that can beat them in a seven game series is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Let's hit this uh this body armor MVP segment real quick. Okay, tell fuck with me. Who I got? Body armor. Of course, everybody knows that this segment is brought to you by Body Armor Sports Water, the alkaline water that provides real hydration with real electrolytes for taste. Everybody's Miss Wilson. Las Vegas Aces, MVP, all-time record single season with points, Miss Wilson. Everybody's always drinking body armor, but it seems like Asia has been drinking enough to fill the Pacific Ocean. All right, she been killing. She's been absolutely destroying it. What a season for her. What a season in the WNBA. The W has gotten more press than ever, and uh, it's really exciting to watch. I know, and, and, and it's a time when she's so dominant, right? She's so dominant, but she go be like, uh, 
it's a time where the contracts are low and, you know, our dominance is high right now. So it's, you know, and, and a lot of times in a situation that although she's carrying, you know, she's the forefront of the WNBA, most of the times the people that's in the forefront don't get everything that they deserve as the for, forefront person. You know what I'm saying? I, LeBron James, I don't know, he probably bought brought in, I don't know, close to a trillion dollars to the NBA since he's been in the NBA. At least. And, at least. And he's got, I don't know, $500 million in contracts, maybe $600 million in basketball contracts. You know what I'm saying? So the, 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 the head face of the league doesn't usually gets all the justice that it, uh, he or she deserves. So um, I just hope it's not that in her case. I hope they open up that bank she break, you know, a, a crazy deal. But even the deal she break is going to be not compared to the deal from 10, 20 years now from the average center, you know, all because of the work she's put in. So MVP for sure, 100 percent. Shout out to her and head on over to your local 7-Eleven and get some body armor sports water today. Whether it's a sports drink, the zero sugar, the IV, the flash IV, long weekend, even if you hey, if you're a professional basketball player, always something to enjoy. Body armor, get some today. And when you're done getting your body armor at any one of those local convenience stores, make sure if you're in Vegas, go grab a ticket to the Aces. Go see, go see a, a legendary team, coach, and players. Go check them out. Amazing. I love this. Love talking ball with you, brother. Last player I'm going to talk about is Rui Hachimura. I think that... No, 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 no. All right, we can no, talk about Vando no. then. Right, right. That's the X factor right there. That's the X factor. Rui, he a good basketball player, but I don't... He's not the X factor to me. Tell me why. Actually, you know what? He he should be the X factor because he gets paid as the as the X factor should be. So yeah, fuck it. We go put him X factor. We go put him X factor. Let's put him X factor. He needs to do more. He needs to do more. His attitude needs to be way tougher. He he has to come in like I'm the second option. Like that's has to, his mindset has to be. Yeah, it's AD here. It's LeBron here. It's Austin Reeves here. It's D'Lo here. But no, AD getting it. I'm the second option. That has to be his mindset, you know, because they do need that. What made him successful? That that bubble year, Kyle Kuzma, a, a, a wing with size that can put the ball on the floor. And and, and people used to clown Kyle Kuzma because he used to take some tough shots, but you need some balls like that because the same shots you take in the regular season that look tough is the same shots you go take at the end of the game, you know, not just when you hot. With Kyle, Kyle Kuz, Kuzma, shoot, Kuzma be one for – one for motherfucker seven, come down, shoot, has he three, go in. Okay, two for eight, don't sing bad, get an and one. Okay, three for nine, 33%, that don't feel bad. Okay, cool, hit another three. Four for 10, next thing you know, you hit two more shots, you know, I'm, I'm seven for 12, that ain't too bad. You know, I don't think Rui, at, you know, this past year and, and, and playing with him, I don't think he has the attitude of I missed seven, the next one going in. So I think once he changes that, I think he changes, the, you know, him as a basketball player. I think that irrational confidence is sometimes a very valuable thing in an NBA Or delusional, player. however yeah. one you want to have it. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, as a, and that's kind of who you are as a person sometimes. Like you see Kyle Kuzma, that's, that's who he is. I think that's what got me going so far. Yeah. Delusional confidence. Like literally delusional. Like delusional. Yeah, I got LeBron. Pat, who you want? Yeah, give me KD, coach. Back-to-back Garden Dame. Yeah, give me Steph, coach. Who you want, Pat? Fuck it, coach. Just switch to one through five. I can guard Jokic. Like this delusional confidence. Like it gets you, it gets you places where you didn't even know you would get there. So yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Sometimes it's better to draft a guy who's like walking into the tunnel or sign a guy who's like wearing the pink sweater with the long sleeves or some shit who's just like, I'm out here. I'm just fucking being myself, as yeah. opposed to somebody who might, you know. Being the, the khakis a little bit more workman type. The Kelly of, Oubre types. Yeah. So somebody who has a loud personality, who knows who they are. Maybe they've been told they're great for a long time and they it's become who they are and they believe it. And I think that I don't know how you instill that in a guy like Rui Hachimura. Uh, I think yeah, yeah, I think that's a since birth type of thing. Or you challenge somebody, you know, somebody like Braun, somebody with that type of pedigree, challenge them. Like, hey man, we need more from you. You hear that from a motherfucker, especially from LeBron James. Oh, you 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 tighten up them Jordans a little 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 tighter. Yeah, that motherfucker bounce will be that that a fast break won't be a motherfucker regular dunk. That motherfucker be a tomahawk slam. You understand? It's a difference. We need the tomahawk slams from Rui this year if the Lakers Straight are going up. to get back to the 
playoffs to get back where they need to be deep right. into the playoffs. So where obviously Vando is, uh, you know, a guy who's uh, who who can affect winning a lot. Who the contract is a big thing, and the the injuries have been part of his story for sure. But I mean, Rui Hachimura needs to to elevate. No, yeah, you got to elevate, and 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 go to sleep every night with okay, cool, I missed it. All right, that's my shot. Or yeah, I made it. Oh, I'm not super hype. I'm not whatever. That's my shot. When will we play next? You know, you had you need to have that that type of attitude. But well, I think D'Lo go. Uh, I think D'Lo go make a jump this year. You know, uh, I mean, he he starts off slow. He dries up. You know, uh, you know, in the middle of the season, he go through a shooting slump, and people want to put the worst out on. But my father was shooting fifty over fifty percent from from three damn near the whole season. Man, he shot the shit out the ball. He played his ass off this season. You know what I'm saying? It's probably one of his, you know, top three years, you know, of playing basketball. So I think he go take the next jump. I think Austin Reeves go, obviously, he always gets better, you know. Um, so we have to see. We have to see with the with the development too, because uh Phil Handy ain't there no more. Mm. You know, and I, you know, that's not discrediting anybody. You know, JJ Reddy go had them boys ready, but far as a developmental standpoint, Phil Handy was hands-on, hands-on. I seen that shit every day with each player. And that, you know, he's not with the Lakers, so I don't know what effect that has on any player, you know, but, you know, he one of the top developmental guys in the NBA. Probably in NBA history. Like, he has other guys who develop other players, like, you know, C. Hines from, you know, C. Hines is under him, who's the head developmental guy in Minnesota now, who who's with Anthony Edwards. So, you know, that's, you know, see, uh, you know, Phil Hand, uh, Phil Handy to see Hines is, is see, you know, see Hines is a mentor, you know, so like, you know, having, not having Phil Handy matters a lot too. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. NBA going to be lit as fuck this year. Do you think LeBron is the type of guy to be, to go to a Rui Hachimura and be like, hey, get it the fuck together. We need more. We need this. We need X, Y, Z. Or is his leadership style a little bit more passive? I think it's, I, I think that, uh, I think he flirts with both of them. I think he does a hell of a job in getting the best that he can get out of the players. I, I've, I've, I've noticed with playing with LeBron that you just have to play. You can't worry about LeBron. LeBron go get his. You know, you just play. The more you just play, like, cool, you feel like you can take a motherfucker, take him. Shit, that take up the burden off the 39-year-old. You know what I'm saying? He, he wants a motherfucker out, the, out there to go score 20. But, you know, if that's not happening and shit is drying up, he go try to turn into... Superman and who he is, you know, organically and try to take over games. And, you know, most of the time he does. But, you know, why, why wouldn't the 30, the 39 year old old player want want a ton of help? You know, that makes his job easy, you know. So, I mean, you've seen him with USA, too. You know, he, he played some of his best basketball. I also think that's what makes J.J. Redick such an appealing option for LeBron to and add as a coach. And they put J.J. Redick, the last on the list, top hoop type. I don't know who put him on there. I seen the coaching list. He was last on that motherfucker. God damn. Well, watch. I mean, I bet I bet that he'll be the type of dude to be like, you, you've, seen, you've seen the way that he carries himself since he was at Duke, that he's not afraid to give somebody a hard opinion, that he knows what the fuck he's talking he's gonna about. He's going to be a great coach. If Rui is having a problem, if Rui is like half-assing he's, it, he's loafing, gonna be a great coach. he'll instill he, confidence in and him. He's and he's, an, he's an respectable asshole. <laughs> like, he's just that J.J. Redick. Yeah, I went to Duke. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know basketball. I know how to do things the right way. I know what hard work is. I've been the top person. I know what stardom is. I know what fame is. I've also been a role player. I know how the role is. I know how the bench is. I've also been hurt. I've been through injury. I know how guys feel. He is the perfect person to be a coach, like the perfect person, and still has success in any role he was given. Any role he played with, he played on a team for the white dudes and Europeans. He played with on a team for the black niggas. <laughs> you feel me? He didn't play with Dwight Howard. He didn't play with uh, 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 Joel Embiid. He knows how to work with bigs. He didn't have Van Gundy as a coach, the hardest motherfucker. He didn't had Coach K as a coach, another hard person. He didn't had Doc Rivers as a coach, another hard person. So. He also um, never changed in all of those circumstances. Never changed. He had the same attitude. He he spoke his same truth. He kept he kept clean cut. 
shoulders back, nice motherfucking collar. Boy, boy was sharp every fucking way he through. He got some tats, he was, though. He got some tattoos, it, though. He was thorough. I mean, I, I look at that as little pain. Never hurt nobody, especially coming from a Caucasian male. <laughs> you expect the white boy with, with tattoos. Boy, to look like he done been through some shit. So, right. yeah, I like J.J. Reddick. I like J.J. Reddick. And he's not talking a lot. He's not in front of a lot of cameras. He is over there working, and I respect that. Shout out to J.J. Reddick and the Lakers. Could be a, a big X factor for the Lakers Will this year that, as well. That's the X factor. J.J. Rui. Um, we need... Uh, I, I like this series. I, I think that uh, we should keep on going with the X factor. I mean, not not necessarily this episode, but you know, continuing forward, bringing up X factors. I think it's, it's interesting for people to see your insights as far as what teams need. For example, the Miami, Miami Heat needing a point guard. I think that that's... Kevin valuable. Herterer was my, was my first choice as X factor. If it, were, if it was the X factor for... Sacramento Kings. You know what you go get from the Fox. You know what you go get from Sabonis. You know what you go get from DeMar DeRozan, even if he ain't even put on a Sacramento jersey yet. Kevin Herterer. That's the X factor for them. Why? That's it. Because he's the he's the one person who can put the ball on the four that can create and that can shoot a three. You feel me? But he got to let he got to let us be a double LS. He got to let him hang a little bit. He got to shoot some shots that you know in in, in training camp some. Some some of them some of them four point shots and miss and run back like you know I don't give a fuck that's my shot like he's the X factor for that Sacramento team. I also think he has that in there personality wise. Like we were just talking about that with yeah. Rui. I think that there are you know shreds of that that we've seen even when he was on Atlanta where it's like oh okay he 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 doesn't give a fuck like he'll give someone work and like right. it. it, it you need you want to you want to foster that side of it and really yeah, but he uh, was hurt too. He was hurt this past year because you know because we, we we saw that in Atlanta, like we saw a glimpse of that in Atlanta. But he was hurt this year too, so hopefully he comes back. He comes back healthy, but yeah, he need to let them things hang a little longer for real. He got to in order for them to be successful. Has to. Uh, how about our boy Woj? <sighs> Shout out to Woj, man. I mean, so. I did podcast Woj, 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 um, in Chicago. Woj been following me, man, since high school, college. I think he was the first person to drop my news coming from overseas. You feel me? Like, I did one of my first podcasts I've ever been on was with Woj, right? Um, to see the longevity, right? of his work to still end up in basketball, right? To to still be around the game he loved. He he didn't stop drop Mike to go to coach for the Lakers or he didn't drop Mike to go GM in the NBA. You know, he dropped Mike to go, what's that, to a college team he went to? Yeah, St. Bonaventure, is it? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, you, you know, so that shows you, like, the love and the passion for the game, you know, and obviously he's, he's seen a lot, been – you know, been around a lot, uh, a great mind, like great mind. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for Woj, it wouldn't be a lot of play, people doing podcasts, period, in sports. You know, he's the godfather, so you got to tip your hats off to Woj. Uh, may his career in, you know, in basketball be long as fuck, as it will. He's a very intelligent man. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's the one who paved, paved the way when it comes to podcasting and sports. So um, we wish him all the way up from the Pat Bell Pie side with Rome. Uh, he left twenty million on the table. I saw. Yeah, I, he's he looks like the guy that's not you know phase. He's only you know when I when I, I sing Woj, I Woj man, you gotta get your ass on the pod, man. You want want me to come on the pod, Pat, and you want me to talk about that other guy? I'm not gonna talk about the other guy. I know, nah, fuck that, man. Woj, we ain't gotta talk about him, man. I just want you on the pod, man, because I just I fuck with you. He oh, well if that's that case, goddamn it, Pat, yeah, I will get on your podcast, no problem. So like, he's the type of guy that you know. Uh, he won a billion dollar. He still go put on the same khakis, white and, and you know white t shirt with a collar shirt. He's that type of guy to me. Go to Wendy's or something. I wouldn't say Wendy's. You know, I'm not gonna put disrespect or stains on my man jacket because Woj is the goat. But you know, uh, he's the type of person that you know and enjoy the other find the, the the finer things in life. You know, not the you know walks on a park and you know how much is that ice cream instead of giving me the whole ice cream truck type vibes. Very nice, very smart guy. Mm. So he's not a dick. People, people might accuse him of being a dick. Is he a dick? No, never. I never got those vibes from him ever, ever, not one time. 
Got it. It has to be a stressful lifestyle to be the guy that's always trying to break news, stay one step ahead. Uh, yeah, for sure. Hey, look, check it out. So I asked the owner of our team, Mr. Ophir. I asked him, um, hey, man. Talk to one of my teammates. I say, uh, one of the captains of the team, Tamir. I say, man, I, I'm trying to see if owner, man, we triple crown. I'm trying to see if owner give us a street in Vegas and throw us a parade. He pat, we went triple crown. He'll do it. He'll do it. Trust me, he'll do it. So yeah, we're trying to we're trying to get some championships and throw parade back in states in Vegas, bro. I told him you don't have to shut down the whole strip, but give us a little side street. Shut down that motherfucker. Give us a couple buses. Yeah, catch a vibe. You know what I'm saying? They say he he he'll be down to do it. So I'm excited about that. That's great incentive. You got to get the parade yeah. float. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> the parade float in the states is fire. That's a strip you want to be rolling down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chill, chill, chill. Not too much. Not too much. Not what? too much. Not too much. Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> Guys, let's take a second and talk about DraftKings. TDs. Tutties. Taking it to the house. In for six. Whatever you call a touchdown, there's one thing for sure. Touchdowns matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. On the ground, in the air, from special teams or defense, we don't care how you score them. We just want to bet on touchdowns, and DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet on touchdowns. Ready to place your first NFL bet? Try betting on something simple, like a player to score a touchdown. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your bet today. Ready to do a a dance of your own? New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $250 in bonus bets instantly and get one month of NFL plus premium. This past weekend, uh, had a little touchdown bet on CD Lamb. Sure enough, he scored, took care of business. I also had one on Saquon Barkley and he dropped the ball and had a touchdown taken off the board. I felt like it was an injustice, but the best thing with DraftKings is you can always go back to the well. If I'm betting on someone this coming week, I think Nico Collins could be a good bet. I don't hate it. Nico Collins on the Texans, but you can download the DraftKings Sports book and add code Roan. That's code R O N E for new customers to get two hundred fifty dollars in bonus bets when you bet just five bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Um, I was at this battle rap event this weekend that I threw. The nicest rap, right? Yeah, the nicest. All compliment yeah. rap battles, and man, everybody was coming up being like, uh, like they're just loving it. They know, just know every clip. They're like, oh, the, he knows how LeBron feels. Like he's like, uh, everybody's just locked in. Like all the the, yeah. the rappers, the fans, everybody is. Uh, so the pod is worldwide, bro. The they're so congratulatory than, about yeah. the success of the pod. I mean, it's and it's getting bigger and bigger. Every city I go to, every kid I meet, every country I go to now, everyone knows about the pod. Um, I mean, obviously the vlogs, the. Uh, you know, they, they love you. They love your, your, <laughs> they love the way you come in and spit when we have guests and all that, your insight from, you know, from, from being a fan, you know, I wouldn't put you as a casual fan either. I put you as a fan. Thank you. So from, for being a fan, you know, who know I'm bald, know how it operates. They, uh, they appreciate your literature. Yeah. The pod is a movement, bro. We just got to keep going with it. Shout out to Barstool. We wouldn't be here without Barstool. So shout out to Barstool. Fuck you mean. <laughs> fuck you mean yeah i'm in the coffee shop people multiple people just waiting in line for the bathroom multiple people i i went to the eagles game get stopped in the parking lot people are like get pat Bev back in the city sixers need yeah. him philly needs shout out him to philly. shout out to philly shout out to, hey let's get my home and hold you wrong do we have some more of that devil's juice back there mike you stuck right there i'm about to pull up some more of this devil's juice wrong you got any uh uh, 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 high noons in there. I got the, I got the body armor. I'll tell you that much. You don't I'm getting pour, high, you don't, drated. You don't want to pour up, uh, you don't want to pour up no high noons with the kid? Bro, I do, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, enjoy a, not a full sobriety journey, but a partial sobriety journey. Okay. Say less. How can I help? Just be yourself. Oh, you want me to drink some water? You, no, you no, I don't need problem? anything from you. I think that uh, being around people who are drinking and then making my own decisions on drinking and not drinking is uh, the best way that you can exercise strength as far as sobriety. Like, uh, okay. you know, ju not just drinking because someone else is drinking and like being fine with somebody else drinking. But I'm not, I mean, it's not like I'm sober, but uh, I, I can't pour up right now. Also, dude, Surviving Barstool starts next week. 
Oh yeah, I heard. Yeah, surviving barstool is going to be incredible. Who you got winning? Um, you. No, but I mean, if if it wasn't me, who would you have winning? Um, who's in it? Is uh, Big Cat in it? Big Cat's in it. Big Cat. You say Big Cat has a? Uh, uh, I think that he's a, a big threat. He was the first one voted out last season. Yeah, but that's why you know you 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 finish first or last, you come back with a vengeance. And he's he's a guy. He's a very intelligent man, and he's a guy who puts a, he'll put his life on the line for this shit. So yeah. So you think Big Cat could win it? How about an mm -hmm. X Factor? Anybody that's uh, less Is Spider in it? Spider's not in it, but he won. Uh, uh, he is won Francis in it? Francis is in it. Francis. X Factor, Francis. Yeah, he's a he's a silent killer. Intelligent, athletic. He's a sneaky, a great athlete. Sneaky athletic, sneaky athleticism. I think he could dunk. There we go. Who's the guy that say that that uh? <laughs> With the guy that who played college basketball, yeah, we Titus? have uh, such. Yeah, this one for Titus, man. Titus was the one like, who said Woj was a dick. That's why I had to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, we don't, we don't, we don't fuck with Titus then. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't go back and forth with Titus. Like yeah, that. Don't, yeah, but don't disrespect my boy Woj. Have some. See, you got to respect longevity, man. That's what's wrong with the kids these days. They don't respect the elders. I think that his. Uh, I think part of his bone to pick was that. Uh, he breaks news just two minutes before it was already going to be out. So what? No one else does it. Well, Sham says. No, he's merely second most of the time. I think that it's going to open up an interesting spot for somebody else to kind of emerge as the second news breaking guy. Ah, uh, could that be us? Interesting. I need get to get your ass. We got. We got. We got. We got to get some contact. We got to get you some contact with some agents. That's where that comes from. Is it agents, GMs? Yeah, I think it's the GMs, the agents. You know, those type of people, those type of vibes that can kind of get you that access through those doors that might seem closed, locked, or abandoned. Yeah, like Zach Lowe and like Ryan Rosillo, they're always like, yeah, I just was getting some coffee with an NBA front office executive, like having these unnamed executives be on the Rolodex and just kind of picking their brain and kind of uh, having information to regurgitate. And, uh, you know, that's that's the next step. I need to I need to be having these high level conversations over coffee with guys who trust me. But mm -hmm. I don't know if they trust me. You know what I mean? No, I don't know if they trust you neither wrong. So yeah, maybe we gotta just keep putting you in the, uh, the 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 media room to ask questions. Yeah, get me in the media room. You yeah, know what I mean? I mean? We we had you in there today. Let me stretch my legs in the media room. I want to get right. out there. I want to. I want to see. Uh, you know, I want to see what the upside is. Um, Diddy. Diddy. Let's just stay away from that. You brought it up. I know I brought it up because we have to talk about it. Like we talked about everything because we are part of the culture also. So we have to talk about everything. No bail? Yeah, he's locked up. He's doing hard time. Man, no bail is a real thing. I don't know if people are who don't know about the justice system, but you feel me? I, you know, I, unfortunately, I had some cousins and some homies locked up, you know, and some, some cousins and some homies still locked up. They give you no bail. They know some shit. Yeah, I saw him getting dinner with his family in New York and stuff like that, gathering everybody. That, that was an ominous sign. Tough. Yeah. Uh, everybody, a lot of people are taking glee in his downfall. I take no glee in his downfall. I mean. Seems like guys like Kanye and 50 Cent are celebrating it. A thousand yeah. bottles of lube is, a, is too much lube, though. I mean, and I'm a baby oil type of guy. Like, I'm not a lotion type of guy. I'm the type of guy who gets out and baby oil. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm still wet out the shower, but I put the baby on while I'm still, still wet. So when I wipe it off, I'm still shimmering. And you feel me? One bottle get me shit five, six months. Maybe he was doing a, a, thousand. Slip, a slip and slide. Maybe he was having a KY wrestling event. And like it, and it's like. School. It's like you want to, like you don't want to hear about it, but then you want to hear about it because you want to hear the small stories inside the big, the grand scheme of things. You know, the who's who and the oh who who was there and oh man, like 
Yeah, I hope that there's. I don't. I mean, I'm sure. Is that we'll a possibility of someone tells or talks in this situation? Like how does this roll? How does this work? I'm not familiar with the justice system, although well, I might be colored. I don't know a lot of uh, insights about the story. I'm not sure exactly what parts are still going to be released, but I, I, I don't necessarily know the victims. Hopefully, there's justice for the victims. That's how I for feel, sure. but I don't know 100%. who the victims necessarily are yeah. outside of the one heinous video that we saw. Yeah. And that yeah, was heinous. Know. Heinous. Oh, man. No uh, bail. Passport's gone. Act right, fellas, you know? Everybody, that's, a, that's a message for everybody to act right. For real. And that justice, uh, justice waits for, for no man. No man. And what goes up? Unfortunately. No, I know unfortunately. That shit come right back down. And usually it come back down in pieces, too. It'll yeah. never come back down the way you threw it. Right on your head. Yeah, yeah. And, and on your shoulder. And my a little piece hits you under your chin and a little piece hits you in your chest and a little piece skin your knee a little bit. Yeah, that motherfucker come down to pieces now. We could we could get to some NBA stores if you want to. No, I have a uh I have a black or white question. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, if that's the question. That's what Michael Jackson said. Okay. I don't know if you can answer this. I mean, that means I probably can't, but go ahead. Because you're a married man, so I don't think you can answer this one. I'm a married man like uh, Robin Hood's boys. My white versus black question is this. Approaching a white female and approaching a black female to go on a date is your approach different? I think black female, you got to grab them by the arm, right? No, no, no. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. <laughs> what? We ain't doing that wrong. We ain't doing no groping, no grabbing by no arms. We ain't doing none of that. I didn't say groping. We, grabbing by arm. I don't know what you pulling, hitting, fighting. I think it's excuse me, miss, what's your name? I think that's the only no, way to do no, it. No, 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 no. I don't think no grabbing arm. No uh, physical touch and they don't know you. I don't think that's the way to go. I don't think that's the way to start it off. That is some white shit. So, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> you might be right. How do you know this answer? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. But, I, I but if, a black, if a black guy just grabbed a white girl's arm. Oh, yeah, lawsuit. I'm, no, no, no. I'm talking about cancel <laughs> and then lawsuit. Yeah, in the dough. So I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, how does it go? For a white guy that approaches black female. A white guy that approaches black female. I'm going to have to defer to my white brothers. Mike? What did Chris Brown say? We say Mike said he's, he uses the what? Mike said when he applies to jobs, he uses the same resume. <laughs> Sure you do, buddy. Sure you do. <laughs> sure you do. Uh, okay, yeah, that was my white black. That's all I had. I see you can't come up with no answers for me. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to, I feel like we almost need a woman's perspective on this because uh, it's, it depends on, I guess, what who, works. Who, who that black girl in the front office of Barstool at, when you walk in? Ebony is on uh, maternity leave right now. I will oh, get her in having here. a baby. She had a baby. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, boy, girl. I think it was a boy. Shout out to Ebony. First person I came at work, she she she, she slid me Henny. <laughs> I say, oh, okay, yeah, I like Barstool already. For security, first I seen white guy, black girl I seen second. What's up, Pat Bear? Welcome to Barstool. You want a shot of Hennessy? Ah, damn. Okay. Say less. She yeah, kept it on her. She has it in the holster at all times. Cheers. Congrats. Laheim. Laheim to Ebony. Man, we were supposed to have Nardo Wick on today, uh, but he, yeah. we lost him at the last second because I wanted to ask him about one of his lyrics. Uh, I didn't know if it was a positive lyric. He said, uh, I get money like I'm Jewish in one of his songs, which, you know, shout out to shout out to the uh, Jewish brothers and sisters out in Israel. Yeah, shout out to the Jewish community. Shout out to all the communities, though. You know, it's always love everywhere.
Uh, he also said uh, something about uh, uh, putting it in her liver. And so I was going to yeah, ask. I ain't going to lie. I've been getting so many. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and change that conversation. I've been getting so many, um, <laughs> so much love from the Jewish community too, man. So much love. Like a bunch of people reaching out. Um, yeah, mazel. Yeah, you know, it's, it's been it's been tough, tough, tough. I learned how to count to 10. Hit me with it. F is zero. So I'm going to go. Actually, I, I know 11 numbers. F is. Is zero. Ahad is one. Stein is two. Stein? Shalosh Stein. Stein is two. Shalosh is three. Alba is four. Hamesh is five. Shase is six. Shalosh. No, Shase. Shase is Sh- six. Shase is six. Shava. A Shava. Shevi is seven. Uh, Sh- 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 Shmani is eight. Daesh is not. That's why I said the Shmoney dance. That's how I remembered it. Shmoney is, is when did you eight. learn this? About a week ago? No, about a couple of days ago. Daesha is nine. I remember Daesha because I had a cousin. Her name was Taisha. So okay, yeah, I know how to fuck that sound. Daisha. Daisha was nine, and Esav was ten. Wow, eleven numbers. Eleven, man. I only and it only took me one day. I know that that th- those numbers have too many syllables. I know that they can't hit that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, yeah, five, six, yeah. seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm learning, to le- learning, learning a little Hebrew over here. Hell yes, bro. Uh, well, I'm going to try to learn some and, uh, just so I can keep up and communicate with you. I love that. Tough, tough, tough. Tough. Tough to you, my bro. Tough to you, my my bro. And uh, we'll be back. Hey, um, before we go. Yeah. I know they get tired of me hearing it, so can you tell someone to tell someone to tell someone else to subscribe to the motherfucking pod? And if you're a little kid, subscribe to the mother freaking pod. Kids, listen to your parents. Listen to your parents. Hey, look, speaking of parenting, I get a call from um, Spank's mom. Yeah, Pat. Um, I got a, got a call from Elijah, uh, teachers from school. They called uh, actually three times. Like they were, they were trying to get in touch with me. Usually it's a one call. They leave a message, call us back. I guess they called three times. So it was, I guess, urgent. Um, he's a class clown. He gets great grades, though. He loud. He likes to make jokes. This, 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 this. On the way to school this morning. I go, um... Son, I know how you're feeling because in a lot of ways, I was the same way. But I've learned, son, that over the years, that that's cool until you're being a distraction, until you're being, uh, until you start to get in trouble. It's cool until then, right? So understand, son, you can be all that. You can be the loud guy, but, you know, no one told me when I was the loud guy that that was also the weakest guy also. You know, I don't, I don't think you're a weak man, so I don't think you should behave as one. Valuable lesson this morning. Valuable that, lesson. That's one for the kids. Yeah, valuable lesson this morning. So uh, hopefully he's not standing on tables as we speak uh, and behaving himself like a young adult. I'd love to see that. That's amazing that yeah. his name's Elijah because at the Seder meal, don't they leave a seat for Elijah? Uh, uh, that's very nice to have uh, for your brothers and sisters in Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yes. Well, leave a seat for me uh, while I'm over while, while you're over there. And uh shout out to to Young Spank. Laheim. Laheim.